Hello, family, and welcome back to the Ebony Odyssey. My name is Jermango Long. And this is Sharman Ichi Long. And we are servants of the Most High God. We appreciate you coming along. And as always, enjoy the journey. Today, family, uh, I want to go back and I want to talk again about the verse I did yesterday. And my support scripture for the day is still the Yasher chapter 19, verse 44. And it reads, and the Lord was provoked at this and at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had an abundance of food and had tranquility among them and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days, their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord. All right. So family, um, I sat down with my wife today uh, and we talked about uh, the cities of Sodom and Sodom and Gomorrah. And the book of Yasher, which is in the Apocrypha, uh, gives more account or more details to some of the things that went on in the uh, city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I wanted to point five things out that really stood out to me and my wife as I read to her this morning. Um, the first one uh, was a rich merchant. He had money and goods, uh, and he went to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to sell it. Uh, sell his items and make money. But those items were stolen from him. Uh, and when the people stole them from him, they all split it up, all the people in the city. So when he would find the person who had stolen something and come to them, they only had a small portion. So when he took them to court, they would laugh because it's like, is this all that we stole? Just this very small portion. And they said, oh, you gave me this. And so that always made uh, a problem for those merchants that was coming. Uh, the second one uh, was the poor people having nothing. Uh, when they would come to the city, they would give them uh, silver and gold, right? And then they would come into an agreement. All of the shops of the city, all of the uh, people who had restaurants and things like that, who sold produce, they would all come together after giving this man silver and decide not to sell to him at all. So he would go from city to city, the five cities of uh, in that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah region, and they would not sell him anything until he pretty much died uh, because of, you know, he, he was famished. He starved to death. And when he would starve to death, they would go back and they would take the gold and they would take uh, the clothes and all the items that he had uh, because he was now dead. Uh, and that was some wickedness that they did in the city. It was another story about a traveler. A traveler coming to the uh, city and no one wanted to put him up for the night, but he was a, a traveler with money, with resources. And so all he was needing was pretty much room and board for the night. Uh, and so this traveler had a beautiful saddle and a, and a cord uh, and the owner of the house that finally took him in. He, he put those away for safekeeping. And then at the end of the guy's journey, you know, he he kept asking him, stay another day, stay another day, stay another day. And so after pretty much uh, two days of uh, staying, eating both breakfast and lunch, uh, he wanted to leave. So he got all his stuff and said, please return the saddle. And what did the man say? Oh, it must have been a dream. You didn't come here with these things. Uh, I don't know what you are talking about, but I am an interpreter of dreams, so I will tell you uh, your dreams, you know. And, you know, he, he gave him some story about his saddle and his cord. And, and the guy was like, no, I was awake when I gave you these things, when you, when you took me in, when you took them off of my uh, donkey. Uh, and, and he said, no, 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 we will go to court and we would talk in front of the judge. And in front of the judge, he says, no, I'm an interpreter of dreams. I was giving him a discount on my interpretation. But now since he's brought me to court, I will charge him the full wage. So he charged him the full wage and stole his uh, items from off of his horse. I mean, off of his uh, donkey. So that is another bad thing that they did uh, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and the last two that I'm going to talk about is with the kindness the kindness that people showed. Uh, one was a poor man uh, was showed compassion by Lot's daughter. And when she showed this compassion, you know the custom is to starve them out and then take their goods. And they kept wondering, well, how is this man alive? How's this man, you know, been sustained for so many days? So they sat in wait. They found who was being compassionate to him and they burnt her. They burnt her in the square where everybody could see because she broke the law. 
of helping somebody uh, who is poor. And the last one was a messenger from Abraham's wife, uh, Sarah. And she, she had sent this uh, messenger to check on Lot and his family. And while this messenger was there, he saw a poor man being abused and his garments being taken. So what he wanted to do is he, he confronted the guy taking them. And that guy ended up hitting him in the forehead. And the forehead gushed forward blood. And then the guy said, hey, you should pay me because I relieve you of this blood that was uh, coming from your forehead. And so he took him to the judge to to charge him for the injuries or for the, the bloodletting that he sustained from the guy hitting him in the head. Uh, the judge agreed with him. But uh, at this point, it was a funny part in the story that my wife definitely laughed at <laughs> because the messenger hit the judge in the head and say, now pay him the same thing that I would be uh, paying because he helped me and I help you. And so uh, those are the five stories that we kind of understood from the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so my wife wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other things that she got out of what we read today. Well, a story that's kind of in the news now is the, about the 50 immigrants that were taken from Texas and Florida and flown to Martha's Vineyard and promised jobs and food and shelter and things like that. Well, as you know, um, well, most people know, Martha's Vineyard is, you know, kind of ritzy. Uh, wealthy people live there. You know, the average home is about $800,000 which is a lot of money and the average annual household income is almost $135,000. And initially when the people got there, they were met with compassion and they were given things. But now, you know, the welcome runs old and the people in Martha's Vineyard are saying, well, we don't have the resources to care for 50 immigrants. Well, we know that the that rich. is not true. Mm -hmm. They're they're rich, and most of them have many resources to care for these immigrants. They they've just kind of worn out of their welcome now. And you think about that. Now, it's nobody's responsibility, but us with money, with resources, is always you know based on what we believe to help those in need. And the thing about this is, if the wealthy neighborhoods don't want to care for them or don't have the resources to continue to care for them, how much more so are the neighborhoods that they were uh, shipped to in the first place? Now, this area is a wealthy, well-to-do area. And now, instead of shipping them there in the beginning, they ship them to a place where you already have people that are struggling to make ends meet. Uh, they are having problems with uh, the food, the, the transportation, the housing. As, as expensive as everything is, how much more so is a burden uh, would these people be? And, and who is to bear all of this burden? But when I go back to that, to that uh, verse that I was talking about, Verse 44, it says why God is angry with us. It says that even though they had an abundance of food and tranquility among them, they still would not sustain the poor and the needy. Like, man, it, I look at America and I love America. And it was, it is abundance of food. So much food that we threw it out in the evening that we threw it in the trash can, that you could be homeless on the street and still get a good meal. But at the end of the day, nobody cares that much about the needy uh, or the people that don't have. And it's evident. And also some of the things that I got from here as we talk were about um what were those what was those items that we talked uh, about? About having the stimulus fund that was given you know, people were all excited. Oh, yeah, we got the stimulus fund. Um, and then you see things like the cost of food being more expensive and all the prices getting increased or the lack of food in the restaurants and the stores. Um, and now if your kids were in uh, private school, you didn't get this. But 
um, public school kids, they got an EBT school card where they were able to get food and groceries. Just, I mean, just as long as you had a child that was in public school, you got one. Um, even the $10,000 school fund, uh, the loan forgiveness. Well, people got that, but now you see how expensive the schools are for you to even go to school. Um, the PPP loans and also universal health care. And we talk about all these things when it comes to mind. And I'm sorry that we're going long, but me and uh, my wife had a wonderful conversation about this this morning. It's like that poor man uh, that was given the silver, right? He was given the silver, but everything uh, was barred from him. Everything was kept from him. Uh, you know, sometimes they give you something only to take it away again in the end. You know, they may give you a stimulus check, but they're raising all of the uh, the taxes. They're raising all of the rates for food. They're raising all of the things or the necessities of life. So, yeah, you, it may look like it's good in the beginning, but it's ultimately coming to hurt you in the end. You know, people going to school. Yeah, you got loan forgiveness, but now school costs, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars more. So what are we getting forgive for? Because now we can't really afford to go. And, you know, the universal health care, it was great when it came along. We have the money uh, to take care of everybody. But guess what? Now we're going to start dropping these programs because too many people are on them and we can't make the profit that we used to make. So it's not it's not in our best interest to do it. So, guys, it's a lot going on that we need to keep our head up and stay alert for. Um, and as we continue our journey here, you know, we, we keep reading, keep following the word of God, keep looking to see how the times have changed and how much they've changed. But we ain't going to hold y'all any longer. As always, family, we appreciate you coming along. And as always, enjoy the journey.